What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So in this video is another masterclass series in which I show you how to beat every single class in the entire game on your Dragonite. And in this video it's all about the Templar, so let's get into it. Welcome back guys, and before we hop into the meat and potatoes of this thing, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel flow. The support you guys provide is absolutely amazing. Thank you so very much. And before we actually get started, if you wouldn't mind liking and subbing today's video, that'd be fan freaking tastic and keep me motivated and keep making these series because quite frankly, I, I really like these. So we are against one of the best Magplars in the entire game. This is perfectly perched Pelican, you know, Pelican ESO. If you guys don't know who this is, uh, he's a phenomenal content creator here on YouTube. Uh, he does a lot of 1BX content and also dueling content. Is one of the most powerful uh, Magplar builds in the entire game when it comes to dueling. His newest dueling build, I can't beat. I don't know how to beat it. Um, if it's it's absolutely incredible, and that is definitely a video for another time. So, uh, what I'm going to be going over in this is like some of the top things you need to be looking for. I will kind of explain them as we go, but essentially, it's about how to dodge power of the light combos, um, baiting them out of the runes, health baiting in general. Um, kind of when you need to block, when you need to roll dodge. So right off the bat, guys, I want you to pay attention to this debuff. This will come back and haunt you every single time if you do not pay attention to it. As a rule of thumb, usually around the one and a half mark to the one second mark to the two second mark, they're always going to javelin you, and then the burst is going to come after that. So let me let me kind of explain that this little interaction here. So if you guys are unaware, Javelin is unblockable, so you kind of have to roll dodge it. But the thing is, when you roll dodge, you actually take pretty much all that damage anyway. So, right here. Uh, this is something that's going to bite me in the ass later. I'm going to show you where I actually died because of this. Most people's reaction is to break free and roll dodge after they get CC'd. That is the absolute opposite of what you want to do against a Maglar. Because, first of all, the power of the light goes through roll dodge, okay? Yes, you can roll dodge javelin, but that's the least of your worries. All their dots are going to go through roll dodge. Their jabs are going to go through roll dodge. So you're actually gimping yourself by break freeing and roll dodging. The best thing you can do is break free as quick as you can, hold block, and spam your heals. If you're at a pretty comfortable threshold, and also when they put power of the light on you, if you can CC them during that five seconds, so he can get CC'd there, kind of play it out, he's going to put power of the light on me. If you can CC them right here, that's like one to two seconds that they cannot do damage that is going to amplify power of the light. If you guys don't know what power of the light does, it essentially takes a portion of the damage that you do during its duration on that person and then just applies one instance burst um, at the tail end of it. So anything you can do to mitigate whatever damage during this time is, is amazing. So right here um i know the burst is coming like i'm roll dodging a lot i'm blocking i'm trying to move his camera angle around um one mechanic that a lot of people don't know is that you actually have a couple frames to where see i roll dodge here but javelin still missed for whatever reason um there are a few frames at which after you come out of your roll dodge you can still dodge abilities um i don't know why it extended so long in this instance but you know that's just some things to note um, also, pay attention to their character model. You know what says they're running at the very beginning of the video. You saw the blue ring expand around him, that rallying cry. You see uh, his hands are glowing red and his feet are glowing red. That means he's running Balorgs. And kind of identifying uh, those types of sets will kind of tell you um, how they're going to play. Now, I don't know what his other um, set is, but um, it does a lot of damage, so it really doesn't matter. So let's go back right here. I want to show you a huge mistake that I did. So always pay attention to Power of the Light. This should be the only thing you're really looking at. So two seconds, he javelins me, obviously. Look what I do. I break free and roll dodge. This is what you do not want to do because Power of the Light is going to hit me. Jabs is going to hit me. All the dots are going to hit me. Uh, this was a huge blunder on my part. Um, one thing I did do correctly, though, is that I rolled to the south side of him. So right here, he CCs me. I roll dodge. I roll dodge through him. Now, if I was to roll dodge to the back, left or right, I would have 110% died here, okay? The reason the Power of the Light did not hit so hard is because I actually dodged his jabs, okay? So, this does play out in my, to my advantage, but if he was able to flick his camera angle around quick enough and get a couple more ticks of jabs, I would 100% die because my Kroos is not up yet. And that's going to kind of lead me into the next point of the video is what's called phasing. So if you guys don't know what that is, please go check out my advanced movement mechanics guide on ESO. It'll tell you all about it. But 
TLDR is phasing. Um, you don't have any uh, sustenance, meaning uh, there's no character collision in ESO because that would cause a lot of issues. So you can literally hide inside someone's character model. Um, by doing so, you can dodge a lot of damage just by being able to weave in and out of them and if you're not getting hit, you're not taking damage, right? So the Magplar main spammable is Jab, you know, and unless you're in a dueling build, there's some ranged dueling builds out there, but their main um, spammable is Jabs, and it's like a cone effect. So if you're able to dodge that cone effect, you know, by whatever means necessary, then you're going to mitigate a lot of damage. And it's going to save you on resources in the long run, too, so you don't have to actually heal through all that non-mitigated damage. Um, if you want to be a really good Magplar, the only way to do so, if they're on their back bar, you're not going to kill them. Uh, you're just essentially not going to kill them whatsoever. So the best way to do this, don't even try to leap, don't do anything. If you have Corrosive on your bar, please use it. The best time to use Corrosive is when they're going in for their burst. So I usually let myself get kind of low, like right here. He's going to put Power of the Light on me. I toss one, click, one quick kill, and then I pop Corrosive. So now I know I'm probably not going to die, you know, more than likely, and I actually go on the offensive. And this is where you catch a lot of Magplars off guard by going on the offensive during their burst. See right there, I actually clip him with a, not, almost a 9k whip. He wasn't expecting this whatsoever, like, like 110%. So um, this is kind of an example of, you know, like the, the best offense is a good defense. And you need to really get in the habit of like knowing the limitations of your class and like knowing when to go in for the burst. Now. There's one little niche mechanic I want to show right here. Um, the reason he died here is because I used Burning Embers. So Burning Embers is a much quicker cast animation than Whip. If I was to Whip here, it would have done a decent amount of damage, but I don't think it would be nearly enough to kill him. So the good thing about Burning Embers is that it's quicker cast animation. Um, it applies initial damage on hit and also applies the Burning Sass effect, which will tick initially on hit. I was able to lie attack immediately afterwards. And that was the only reason he died there, because of what, he would have 100% blocked, roll dodge, healed, or something. It was just like those milliseconds of time where you know he was so low, I was actually able to quickly get that cast animation off. So you kind of have to know like, each ability has some sort of degree of differentiation of when you cast the ability to when the ability actually registers on your opponent. I know from a lot of experience that Burning Embers is like instantaneously. So this is another clip of me, me dueling Pelican and I'm just going to kind of show you guys like the importance of paying attention to your debuffs here. Okay, so I had him down to like 1k health, you know, at, at one point. So I think I'm about to get into 1k health here. Um, but the importance of paying attention to your debuff, man, like I felt like I was pressuring him. I knew I was on the offensive. I had corrosive going, everything, the stars aligned and I died. How and why did I die there? Is because I did not pay attention to Power of the Light. Do not get too big for your britches. Do not tunnel vision. You know, I see him completely, you know, I see him so low health, I can taste it. You guys have to think, he has Vampire Stage 3 kicking in. It's gonna give him, you know, 30% damage mitigation. Plus he's a Templar. He probably already has like 40K, like almost resistance on him right now anyway. Probably 35K, he's probably a Breton. So he is probably like 40K, right? So I risked it for the biscuit right here and I immediately regret it. You see my bar right here, guys? Do you see this little debuff? I didn't pay attention to this. I'm chilling. I'm at 70% health. There's no chances of me dying here. I have full stamina, right? Absolutely full stamina. And I die. Why did I die there? Because I underestimated the power of the light. I knew the CC should have been coming. There was no reason I should not have been blocking literally everything here, but I just chose not to do so. It actually caught me off guard so much that I just didn't break free in time. And while I was on the ground, there was another tick of Dawnbreaker that went off. And look what I do right here. I don't hold block. If I held block during this power of the light, I would have lived. I just didn't hold block. And that just kind of shows you guys, like, do not get overzealous against Magplar because they will pack you up real quick. All right, kind of moving on to uh, one of the sweatier uh, Magplars I've ever fought. So he's running Mechanical Acuity. acuity. This is Huey, a Rallying Cry, Young Balors. I mean, this is as sweaty as it gets. He's running Bubble. He's running both runes. So um, in this portion of it, I just want to kind of show you guys, like, the importance of, like, forcing them out of, like, their, their secondary small rune. Um, you, you always want to pick your fights, man. Like, if there's... If they want to have you stand in a bunch of AOE, guys, just walk out of it. So when I'm pressuring him, I'm trying to push him away from his circle. The reason I'm doing that is because if he wants to replace it, he's going to have to waste a whole another global cooldown. And also, if I'm feeling pressured, I'm just going to simply walk away, right? See, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm feeling a little bit of pressure. I'm low in resources. I'm literally just walking out of his AOEs. He's not running a gap closer, so I know he has to pull up on me. 
So by doing this, now if he wants to keep up the pressure on me, he has to put another ring down. He has to put it, you know, he's actually running cow drops in this. It's a very sweaty dueling build, guys. Like, okay. And that's just kind of what you want to do, like little efficiencies like that. Uh, do I actually die right here? Okay, see, I should have died right here. I'll kind of go back and explain uh, what's going on here. If I stood here and tanked all this, I'd be screwed, right? And this is, again, not paying attention to this debuff will get you killed. Let me reiterate this. Please pay attention to Power of the Light. Guys, I am all the way over here. I'm chilling. I am absolutely chilling. Look, I'm at 25k health, and then, then all of a sudden I'm not. All of a sudden I'm down to like 1k. All right, so please, for the love of God, pay attention to that godforsaken debuff. And again, he gets overzealous this time, and I was actually able to pop gross and go on the offensive. But um, more of the story is, man, keep them out of that secondary rune. Force them out of it by whatever means necessary. Because if they want to engage on you, they will be forced to get out of their runes. So uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Just, just positioning is pretty important as well. All right, so next we're gonna be dueling a Strat PC. And I, uh, he actually uh, came from Xbox. Uh, he's my buddy from Xbox, so I know him quite well. I actually have a different build on. This is the refined open soul build with Plague Break. I mean, it's absolutely devastating as Magpars and Stampars because every single time they purge, they do take a, a quite a bit of a damage. So I'm pretty sure he's running one bar build as well. Always identify what their weapon types are. I know that he's running sword and board, so his only CC is going to be a like reverb and you know whatever. Um, he's gonna be able to also be able to block a lot of damage. So again, I'm running him out of a secondary circle. You know, kind of keep up the pressure when you can. Pay attention to Power of the Light, guys, as soon as he actually held on to, to Corrosive here. And the reason I held on to Corrosive here... So yes, it came off cooldown like pretty much at the exact perfect time. But this is why I'm saying, guys, when if you can keep a Magpar or Stamplar, it doesn't matter. Stamplars are just innately worse compared to Magpar when it comes to dueling. Maybe some 1BX um, Stamplars are better, but in general, Stamplars are just worse, right? Um, if you can keep up the pressure, like kind of like Sorks, if you can get their health low like this, their spells cost so much. And because he has stamina 1 bar, he should not have a burst heal. So he is going to be forced to run bigger. And I'm not sure if he, there is another burst stamina heal. I, I don't really think there is. So he's kind of forced on you know, relying on healing over time effects and a lot of blocking. And it's important for you guys to just kind of know this. I know that Strat does not have a burst heal. So when he gets low on health, I need to pressure him as much as humanly possible. And that's what I do. Like, <laughs> that's exactly what I do here. So we'll kind of let this play out and just kind of, just kind of some, some rules of thumbs. Um, this wasn't nearly as one side as I'm making it out to be. I'll kind of go back a little bit. You guys can see this duel went on for, for quite a while. And he does have a really strong burst combo, um, but it's not nearly as potent as, uh, as Magpar, but essentially the, the class still kind of plays the same, right? So um, kind of rule of thumb against the Magplar or Stamplar or Templar in general. Phasing, right? That's your character model thing. Get them out of their secondary rune. You need to block power of the light. Now, power of the light is blockable. I don't think I mentioned that in the beginning of the video. Do not roll dodge after that CC for the love of God, because every skill in the Templar's kit is more than likely going to hit you through roll dodge, and you're just completely wasting global cooldowns and resources in doing so. All right. With all that being said, guys, if I need to break these videos down a little bit more in depth, please let me know down in the comments. I know there's a lot to unpack in this video. And again, guys, if there's something I need to go over more in depth, um, let me know down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to do so. This is an evolving series. I want to make the best of it for you guys to learn PvP and kind of understand, you know, how some classes function and, you know, why some classes are just innately tougher to beat than others. And I think Templar is one of the hardest classes to beat uh, in the game right now in general and also just against the DK in general. So with all that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. This has been Horcrux and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.